So Canada still is today a constitutional monarchy. And that's just a really fancy way of saying that we do have still the queen or king as our head of state, but there are rules, uh, there are rules and the constitution that actually limit their powers. And because the queen is actually not based here in Canada completely, she um, spends most of her time in Britain or traveling to other dominions as well, then we have our governor general who represents the queen here in Canada. So the governor general, does anybody know her name? Say, there you go, <laughs> exactly. It's the other way, yeah. And so uh, Her Excellency the Right Honorable Mikael Jean, and she is the Queen's representative here in Ottawa and also around the country. She's a Canadian citizen. She comes from Montreal. She was previously a, a journalist and uh, she has her base at Rideau Hall, which is her residence and her place of work. But she often comes to Parliament Hill to fulfill her, her duties as Governor General, representing the Queen. And some of these include, um, maybe you uh, were paying attention in the past couple of weeks of what was going on, the speech from the throne. So she reads the speech, but it is actually written by the Prime Minister. So it's not outlining her priorities, but the government's priorities. Another reason that she would come to Parliament Hill is for the uh, Royal Assent. Royal Assent is given to, uh, to a bill once it is being able to become law. So she is the final step for a process for a bill to become a law. It needs to pass through both chambers, a majority vote in the House of Commons and a majority vote in the Senate, and then the Governor General will give her royal assent. And it hasn't happened in Canadian history that a Governor General has said no to a law. And so it is just again a tradition that is fulfilled by the Governor General, and she does accept what the majority of voted in Canadians and the appointed Senators have said. Any questions about the monarchy or the Governor General before I continue? Okay. As I mentioned when we were in the foyer of the House of Commons, I wanted you to remember what you were seeing uh, on the ceiling and then also comparing to what we see here in the Senate foyer. It looks really different uh, in terms of the color. First off, the color, we see lots of red and gold, which represents the monarchy. Many of the provinces that you actually see here on the Senate foyer represent the fact that in the Senate chamber, it is actually not representation by population, but representation by the regions. So there are actually 105 senators that sit in the Senate chamber, and they come from the different regions of Canada representing those regions. They also come from many different professional backgrounds, and so they have different views uh, concerning the different laws in Canada. And for example, uh, talking about two senators in particular, who represent, I would say, pretty Canadian ideals, we have the former, or still general, uh, Romeo Dallaire, who was the UN general in Rwanda during uh, the genocide in 93, and he sits now as a senator and would have many uh, different opinions concerning justice issues and uh, international conflicts around the world, so Canadians as peacekeepers. So he has his spot in the Senate chamber. And then we also have a uh, former hockey player, actually, Frank Mahovlich, who sits in the Senate, Hockey is a pretty important cultural aspect of can Canadian life and sport and activity like that. So he would also have a different opinion for different bills and, and concerning Canadians. And so these are just some of the diversity that you would see in the Senate chamber in terms of the appointed members. And they are still appointed in the Senate, appointed until they are 75. Uh, and they have to be uh, actually a little bit older. They uh, have to be 35 and have to own a little bit more property. And this actually goes back in, in time to uh, back to Confederation. So the money that they have to own at this point is not that much. Um, and the property that they have to own is not uh, as significant as it was back in, the, back in 1867. The actually youngest member of the House of Commons, comparing it to the Senate here, is actually 21. Because so, you're younger than I am, actually. And he's still finishing his university degree at the University of Quebec uh, in, uh, in Gatineau. So, it's a difference there in the, in the House of Commons and the Senate. Also, uh, back up to the ceiling, there are actually quite a few names here on the ceiling. These represent the past speakers of the Senate, and the speakers of the Senate up until 1922. Because as I mentioned, the building was constructed over the period of 1917 to 1922. And what they decided, they didn't want to add panes of glass after this period, so they decided to put a word on the ceiling to represent all of the future. And can anybody maybe pick it out? A little bit difficult to read the script, but yes. Kedkem. Kedkem, and that means someone. Exactly. So this represents all of the future speakers of this of the Senate. Uh, they weren't going to be adding their names here, but the poetic use uh, of the word Kedka in French. And Monsieur Bolduc, who was the speaker at the time, decided to use his native language French to put Kedka on the ceiling here. 
Also, one other aspect of the ceiling which really intrigues me is actually in the fifth row, in the third column, made, it's a blue background, and there is a golden bird. Can anyone guess what type of bird that might be? Phoenix. Phoenix. Sorry, you, you're such a good... <laughs> you're so used to raising your hand for the classroom, I'm sure. Yes, it is the Phoenix. Uh, so representing the fact that the building was able to be rebuilt, again, like a Phoenix is reborn out of its ashes right after the destruction from 1917 to 1922. And so uh, the fact that we do have this gorgeous, magnificent building in front of us still today that was able to be redone during a period of war and a difficult time in Canada's history. Also, uh, at this point, you know, there was a question in the House of Commons foyer about people who were constructing the building at the time and who were maybe wanting to add their own little personal touch. If you look just directly under the archways here, we have a Viking's head representing a little bit of Canadian history as the Vikings did exploring Canada. And then on the opposite end, we do have another Viking's head. But on either side here, underneath the archways, and on this side, there are four sculpted heads that don't really look like Vikings. In fact, this one right here, some people tend to think it looks like Harry Potter with the glasses like that. It's not Harry Potter, but it, these are the four people that worked very hard in sculpting here in the Senate foyer during the construction of the building. And it was late one, one night that they decided that they were going to leave their mark in the Senate foyer by sculpting their faces. So just like a painter will sign their name in the corner or an author has their name on the front cover of the book, they wanted to leave their mark, and so this is how they did it. When the building was unveiled, people realized, wow, these are not Viking heads, but they decided to leave it because they thought that the people who had worked so hard to build the building did deserve the merit of having their faces in the stone. Yes? I noticed under the archways there's faces on some of them, but some of them have been left as square blocks. Was that done on purpose? Yeah, for the monarchs to be able to add them for the future. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here we also have the monarch faces carved into the stone. Any other questions about the foyer? Yes. Okay, so if it's not Harry Potter, then is it Harry Potter's dad? <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. If he was Canadian, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so we'll be just proceeding to the, again, as I mentioned, the Senate is currently in use by the uh, 